Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. We're gonna get ready to install the Nitrous Express kit today on Bernie. We have a big burnout competition coming up in Florida at Cleese Cars in Bradington here very soon. So we need to get this thing one more step above where he's been for some burnouts. So Bernie is pretty much ready to go. Everything's been great on him. We definitely have popped some tires on this unit, but I want to take Bernie to the next level we have a problem within the skid pad burnouts, it bogging down in high gear, and I definitely want to make sure that we can do high gear burnouts down there. So I need a little extra power. What's the easiest way to bolt some on? Nitrous kit. So today we're going to go ahead and start tearing down, uh, just removing the throttle body, getting some stuff ran, get the bottle mounted in the back and go through everything and then wire it and all that stuff. So just trying to work on it as I have some time to get everything installed so we can take this thing and do some more burnouts. I'm thinking, you know, Maybe a 50 shot auto and then have it 100, 150 on the other side. I also need to look at the injectors uh, on E98. This thing was, I think, around 50%, 60% duty cycle. So that really only allows us to do about 100 shot, 150 maybe on this thing without either changing fuel or going to a bigger injector. But that's all stuff we'll have to figure out here soon. So let's go ahead and get started on installing this thing. So we got the good old destructions here. I went ahead and looked at everything. Got an idea of kind of how the solenoids mount. Everything's going to mount right off of the plate. A uh, bottle mounted in the back. Recommend reading everything before you get started. Most probably won't, but probably a good idea too. Uh, lots of info in there. And then some of the jetting, stuff like that. And we'll be on E85. So this kit here is a dry nitrous kit. I'm going to do two solenoids of nitrous, each one. No fuel on this. We are going to supply the fuel with the injectors here. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. Possibly running out of an injector because that's where the fuel for the nitrous come from. We're not using a standalone tank like some nitrous kits or, you know, tapping into the fuel rail or whatever. Straight up going to be using the injectors to supply the fuel for the nitrous kit here. So I think a dry nitrous kit is a good idea for something like a burnout where you're on and off the throttle bunch. Also, I'm going to use the Holly to make sure we're not spraying it through like rev limiters and uh, stuff like that. The dry nitrous, I, I'm curious, this is something I've been wanting to play with and tune in and everything using the Holly. There's a lot of dry nitrous um, ability to tune it, to control it, and everything else like that. So I think it'll be pretty cool for burnout, you know, on off the throttle, using it only where I need it, like on this truck where I know that it needs more power to get into high gear better uh, in that style of burnout. You know, I can spray this from 2,500 to, say, 45 or 5,500 and then turn it off. So six, 7,000, it's not spraying, but it's up there near rev limiter and just let it only work that. It could do it completely on its own based on programming in the computer or what I was thinking about doing is originally I was gonna have a two-step button, but this thing hits the rev limiter pretty good, so maybe I'll use the second stage here. So I have one stage automatic, second stage on the button. So as I'm doing my tip-ins and stuff, clicker into high gear, grab the nitrous, and then do that and see how that goes. So lots of cool things that you can do now with nitrous and all the EFI stuff. We're gonna go ahead, get started, get this thing mounted, get the plate on the throttle body, and uh, see how this thing installs. Alex is ready for that nitrous life. He's already taken the wing nut off. Gotta get that air cleaner off of here. Get the throttle body off. And then I, it looks like this one solenoid will sit here. You know, one will sit back here, run the wiring in with all that stuff. So it shouldn't be too bad. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that peeled off. Uh, we are gonna end up probably ditching the spacer here. And this comes with two gaskets, and it's nice because it comes with the hardware too, the longer hardware to go through the plate. So all that stuff should be good. Shouldn't it be actually too bad of an install, huh? No. Get that unhooked, get some of that. And how's this one go? That one's kind of goofy. Is that a safety clip? Yep, and then it'll pull right off, or should, maybe. Sounds good. Oh, push. There it is. Push button. <laughs> push to start. All right, so I need to... And all that could probably stay, honestly. Whoa. Release it and just set it right here. Oh, yeah, because we do have enough. Throttle. Yeah, oh, we got throttle cable for days. Yeah. <laughs> already got the carb off. Alex has his NX hat on already. Woo! Yeah. Gonna I go ahead. Show a little love for the supporters. <laughs> yeah, so we uh gonna go ahead and cut this out and get this plate off, get the new studs out, start getting all this kind of mounted, see where we're gonna go. And then this stuff is pretty much all in the back of the truck. So, yeah, easy enough. Not not a whole bunch here. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting this cracked open. Getting everything figured out, the nitrous jets actually sit right inside of here. Did we happen to grab the 
Nice. Got lucky there. The first two we grabbed. So, looking at this plate here, no fuel. This is the conventional six, conventional stage six kit. So we have uh, nitrous here, 41, 57. So here's all of our our jetting. So for a 50 horsepower shot, we want a 41, which we got. And then 100 shots, 57. So what I'm going to do is just for getting on the dyno and putting them together possibly. So you got a 50, 100, and if we spray them both together, then you got a 150. So I'm going to go ahead and install these here. Uh, take note of which one's which. So whenever I plummet, I know one stage is, you know, 50 horsepower and the next one is 100. And then depending on what we need and how that burnout comp is looking, we might go ahead and grab those other jets. We have a whole baggie that they send you full of jets so we can step it up. But uh, to make sure we don't overshoot what I have availability for fuel and tuning and all that stuff. Plus, it's in a burnout. I don't think we need a bunch, but another 50 or 100 horsepower is going to do crazy. Remember, this thing made like right at 400 horsepower on the dyno. So with another 100 on it, you know, you're talking possibly right around 500 out of a 4.8. That's it's pretty rowdy. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and get these set in here. And then we will get these fittings mounted on there as well. All right, so we got these lines kind of positioned where we want. We're actually going to go off to the side on both of these. Give us some clearance to the alternator. So it'll actually be here and over there. It's pretty much where we need them. And then there's this cool little crush fitting here that screws into the bottom there. Uh, and then I don't have a perch, so we'll end up blocking those off. So we're going to go ahead and get these mounted to these hard lines here. And go ahead and install the plate. We should be pretty close. It's been super simple so far. i got to say, that is a pretty gangster two-stage setup right there. Uh, pretty clean. When I was first got the kit, I was wondering, how am I going to mount solenoids? And I started looking that they mount off those. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So how, how do we do? Not... Too freaking bad. Nice. Nice clean up wiring there. This wiring. Bring our fuel line around. Down through there. Nice. Yep, run it right along the firewall or the fuel rail and then the firewall. Yep. Man, that looks pretty good. We got our line already ran up here. I have to bring that up a little bit. We might have to rotate that. Yeah, we'll see. I think that'll work pretty good. Um we just kind of got them in there close, but it did get a little bit longer because the solenoids from what we were thinking, but otherwise not too freaking bad. So ran into a slight issue where the throttle body, which just like runs right next to the carb spacer that we had on there before, and we had to clearance it. So now it just barely rubs the NX plate, but the, I mean, it's equal to what this is. So went ahead and just clearance this because it's been a little issue before i was just trying not to grind on my really expensive throttle body but now it's a lot safer and it doesn't catch on the plate because you don't want that to happen because it'll hang the throttle open so just went ahead and for this setup went ahead and clearance that uh now we should be good to go bang that's looking pretty good so you got you know stage one stage two or vice versa this is all mounted up plates on good to go everything's back on there we got full throttle actuation, everything looks clean. Ran our lines here and there. Uh, and now what we do is this is all put together and now we have a Y out here and that is what's gonna feed the solenoids from the nitrous bottle in the back. So we need to get the nitrous bottle mounted in the back of the truck with these mounts and then run the long line up to it. Oh, got that gasket. Don't forget that gasket for the uh, air cleaner. Nice. Coming back together. I was trying to figure out a good spot for the nitrous bottle, and I mean, we could always put it on the roof. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, we're debating lay it down, stand it up. I'm trying to think for burnouts, I would assume standing it up is better because it's not drag racing where G-Force is trying to slosh stuff to the back of the bottle. Standing up, it kind of keeps it where it's picking it up out of the bottom uh, either way. So I'm thinking vertical makes sense. But the mounts they send you with this uh, little step, the bottle would sit kind of tilted out of it if we go kind of right there next to the fan and stuff like that. So just trying to decide how we want to mount this thing. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we, should we just leave it up top? Well, there it is. Ended up using just the one tall bottle mount. The thinner one, that if we were to lay it at an angle, didn't use that one. I'll probably get another tall one uh, to help hold it below. But really, the bottle can't go anywhere like that. Uh, so it's looking... Looking pretty dang good. I like the stand up so when we're doing burnouts and you know spinning around and doing that, the bottle doesn't necessarily come like 
um, where it, and since there's a pickup tube in the bottle, so more or less there's a pickup tube in the bottle, comes down here and picks up out of the bottom here. So when you're launching the car, it's getting all the nitrous from here, to here, kind of no matter how, when it's spinning around, it'll pick it up. So I think that's going to work out pretty well. Ran the line all the way up along the frame rail in a pretty safe area, right up to here, to that Y in the kit. It Ys off, goes to the one solenoid and the other one. And now, Alex got some wires undone, running it right along this fuel rail right here. We got the other ones there. So now I just need to figure out how I'm going to wire this thing in and uh, kind of place my solid state relays, all that stuff. And then inside here is where the power panel is for the rest of the truck. So I need to get 12 volt over to that or from that over to the solenoids and then we should be good to go all right everyone so the, everything is physically installed in the truck other than some relays and stuff like that i was just looking at some of that i need to just clear my mind get into the wiring mode and make sure i'm going to wire everything up the way that i want it i was looking at like does it need a ma master switch and stuff like that or is it all through the holly um i think you can do it either way you want but going to go ahead and call it there for the night tomorrow night i'll come in and finish up the wiring uh so See you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, welcome back. We're back on Bernie uh, the next night. I'm gonna try to wire this thing up. So I was actually looking at Terminator X and unfortunately you only get one stage of nitrous control in it. So what I'm gonna do is the other one will be activated off the switch on the steering wheel. Uh, and then we have our little button in here that will activate. So that'll send signal to the ECU to let it know that it can activate the other one. And then I'm gonna hook this one up pretty manually. So gonna go ground to this switch out of this switch over to uh, the full throttle switch out here and then the other side of the full throttle switch I think I'm gonna go ahead and run the solid state relay from Holly uh, that just needs a ground signal to activate it so using this thing little ground signal there it'll help activate that uh, that'll be easier than using like a regular relay and jumping it uh, off the four poles so and this should work pretty good I already kind of set this up and wanted to make sure it worked right there full throttle so pretty easy from the switch out to one side of this. I got to figure out which one's which. Uh, and then out of this to that relay. So that'll activate it. Orange goes to hot. Blue goes to the solenoid. So this should actually simplify the wiring some and keep it nice and easy. So we're going to go ahead and start running some of those wires now. Looking at all this stuff here, uh, this switch that you need to send a signal to 12 volt, which will end up going to the ECU. On the Terminator X, they're a little bit different. So you can do ground or hot inputs and only ground output. So perfect, PW minus for the nitrous stage out. And then uh, inputs, I can go ground or hot. So probably come off of a key 12 volt source and feed the switch. And then it'll go to one of the inputs here that's open on the Holly. I can pick any of these uh, since they all can take it hot and program it into that one for the uh, N2O enable and input one. That's under here right now. Need to clean this up a little bit better, but Nitrous solenoids are mounted right here and here. Power comes over to the main lug. Uh, the one wire will run out to that full throttle switch. The other wire is gonna come over here and tie into an in and out on the Holly harness. Here's your main in and outs on the Holly harness. Uh, and then I'm gonna end up using, like I said, this switch here. I need to go to ground on one side of this and the other side of this will come into the Holly. And then I have the little switch right there that will be the little activation switch uh, arm it so I guess technically you should arm both of them to where they're off that switch but the way I'm figuring it you'd have to be uh, doing it kind of simplified the full throttle switch and the button on the steering wheel would both have to be active to fire it so it is a, it takes two things to make the nitrous system hit uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that. I think that'll be pretty good. I mean, this truck's not like you're driving around a bunch, a lot of accidentals, times that you would grab the nitrous. I mean, you have to physically be on the button and physically foot to the floor and that to be switched on. So, I mean, I think that'll be safe. Got the rest of the wires ran out here. So one of this wire is gonna go over there to that little switch. These two wires, each of these are gonna be the power and that's gonna to run to one side of the solenoid on each one. And the other side of the solenoid on each one is gonna to go to ground. 30 or 40 minutes worth of work. Lines are ran over here. Got the grounds going up to the firewall there. Got the two wires coming from the salt state relays there. They're connected. Uh, whenever you do connections like that, usually you will want to 
go female male and then on the other side male female so then you can't like accidentally plug in the wrong solenoid uh, once everything's programmed and stuff into the computer so just a little quick tip for that and I went ahead and wired up the um, so I went ahead and wired up the full throttle switch here I'm gonna go ahead and run this wire goes to the well I'm not sure honestly I, I don't have my voltmeter so I need to verify which one's on and which one's off it probably says actually if I look up here but uh, one will go to the solid state relay and one will go to the button on the steering wheel so I went ahead and ran that wire back in run ahead and come from this motion button bracket and button under here and now it's sitting right here there's two wires and this wire is here so what I'm gonna do is take this wire connect it to one side of the switch the other side of the switch will go to a chassis ground on the chassis uh, so when that gets clicked it'll send the signal through the switch so when the switch is on it'll come all the way through and into the vehicle so uh, that should work so we'll have one manual and one program through the hallway which will be pretty cool uh, kind of you know do its thing and then also have that backup on a little bit of nitrous pretty slick setup for a freaking burnout truck so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up that right there and then we should be just about done wiring this thing I think I got this all wired up here uh, switch and then that full throttle switch outside off the steering wheel so hopefully uh, I went ahead and hooked up the power nothing there and here just the wide open throttle click there so that's wide open throttle then grab this we should hear a click on the nitrous perfect yeah I don't know if you guys can hear that or not but it's pretty much whenever I go if I hold this it'll turn it on or if I'm full throttle and then doing a burnout and I can grab it like that and then it's on so this is a two needs two things to activate but that is just manually activating it. So if I do that right there, full throttle and grab the button, I'll grab the first kit or second kit, probably the second kit, and I'll program in the first kit to kind of be auto uh, in just a little shot probably, and then have the button for more if needed type of a deal uh, and have that 50, I'm thinking like a 50 shot all the time, anytime I roll through that RPM range to help it get past the, like the converter, that tight spot and help it like get a little bit more power to just get up in the RPM into the power band that this thing has. Um, and then once we get past that, like when it's at 6,000, I think it'll be happy. But if there's for some reason I want to grab it or if it goes to spray some, it's still not enough, I can grab it and spray both together. So it'd be like 150 total. Uh, so it's kind of cool that I have some options and pretty neat to be able to play with nitrous like that. So, uh, oh yeah. So the last thing I have to do is hook up this little activation switch that more or less uh, I could bypass this do the same thing and more or less then you could spray the bottle without that switch on uh, but then every time it's at RPM range without that on it won't be so like in static burnouts and stuff we don't need nitrous so you can just leave this off do your normal burnout but in the like um, Aussie style burnout skid pads then you'd kick this on activates that normal stage and then the computer will take care of it from there and it's my jumbled mess of wires down here and being able to tidy everything back up i think uh we might be there so we know this stage whether that's probably going to be two uh so now we just need to try and program in the stage within the holly and see if we can make this thing work so I got into it, uh, stage out, so that should already be good to go. That's gonna signal the solenoid when to activate. And then view inputs. So input one, and into enable. So stack those together, because um, it's not a switch and, it's just uh, once this is on, that should see it. I need to configure this though as a hot so actually, because it showed up as a ground, so you come over, get your nitrous set up, will enable the stage, input one will enable, and then uh, somewhere in here, I can change that, so I saw it earlier, to uh, right here. So both these need to be 12 volt. Now, because I'm going to send, I have keyed source power, coming up to the switch, out of the switch, to the ECU. So, 
I remember right, and I'm on the red white wire, which I think is input 1, A12. So done there. I will have to hook up my uh, little cable here, and then we can take a look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up real quick. Hooked up. USB link. Uh, I did change some system, some nitrous, some fuel, so send to ECU. Cycle ignition. Now it looks like everything is good. So I need to come up here and this is where I will check it. So I want this to be a dry. I'm not gonna mess with any of this stuff yet. The bottle's not on. So TPS trigger at 8500. If I put this at zero, zero, or well, max RPM 5000 for testing purposes. Duration 10 seconds. Um, fixed timing, lean cut, rich cut. Take those off for a second. I just want to make sure that it's going to work. So input one will enable it and then TPS will start it. So let's see here. So that should be enabled. Lights on. So I should hear this click when I go to 85% throttle. 40, 50. Okay, I'm not hearing the solenoid click, so maybe I got something else in here that is making it mad. Uh, let me check some settings and I'll be right back. Quick Google search shows that you cannot dry test nitrous above Clud Flare. Clud Flare in a Holly system is at like 35%, I think. So came in here, put TPS trigger at 10%, everything's green. And you guys can hear it right there. So then if you go, you know, 30%, now it's on. So nice, everything is working, so sick. Now I just gotta go through and set everything. Like I said, I'll probably come in here, you know, above 90% TPS somewhere between 2500 and 5500 on the dyno we might let it spray up to you know 6 6500 i don't think i just i'm thinking it'll be cool just to more or less it will be automatic dry nitrous spraying whenever you tell it it needs it uh based on rpm and it'll only spray in that window i don't think it'll be too abrupt or too rough since it's a dry kit not wet so you're not worried about puddling up the intake and stuff uh so we will go through all the full settings tomorrow. I need to go get the bottle filled. I need to tighten up all the wires and maybe we're gonna throw this thing on the dyno. So then we can see what this thing makes, get a good tune up in it before we head to the burnout comp down in Florida. So if you guys wanna see that video, Bernie hitting the dyno on nitrous, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the wiring. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I know it's a little bit of a crazy deal, two days here, uh, but that's usually how projects go, right? But easy, easy kit to install, really. Uh, most of it was just in my head and trying to make it all work with this. If you're just setting up something simple off of a wide open throttle switch or a button, super simple. Uh, the other part of that is the dry nitrous, but what a cool deal that I now I have a two-stage plate kit on Bernie. So again, huge shout out to Nitrous Express. What a cool kit. Uh, and yep. I think we're about ready to sprain this thing. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.